When it comes to environmental management, sustainability and action on climate change in your organization, what could be possibly worse than greenwashing? Well, I believe it's this. Breaking your entire organization down into small detailed parts and then handpicking one or two of these parts and then serving them to your audience, to your customers on a green platter over and over, hammering it home over and over at the expense of your actual environmental footprint. Now, before I give you concrete sustainability related examples, let's start with a simple analogy. Imagine a typical Monday morning at work, right? Your colleagues ask you, hey, how was your weekend? What are you going to say? Probably something like this. My weekend was great, thank you. On Saturday I went for a swim and on Sunday I had lunch with my sister. How was your weekend? What have you just done? You looked over your shoulder to the past 48 hours and you picked two events that actually happened and you served them to your colleagues, right? Both of these things, swim on Saturday and lunch with sister, actually happened. They were true. But were they a true reflection of your weekend? Probably not. Because what else happened during the weekend? On Saturday night, you puked into a plastic bag in an Uber. Luckily, you had a plastic bag, you were going home from a party. Then you had your typical conversation, phone chat with your mother, half an hour chat on Saturday with your mother and she kept again and again bragging about your more successful brother, whom you can't stand, you bit envious and jealous, but you just rolled your eyes and you didn't hang up. Your girlfriend has been late a little bit cold and detached and distant and you're a little bit worried. Hey, where is the relationship going? Is this it? And despite promising that you will clean the house on Sunday, you Netflixed for three hours eating cheesels. Now, are you going to say that to your colleagues on Monday morning? Of course not. By you saying swim on Saturday and lunch with sister on Sunday, you didn't greenwash or you didn't lie, right? In the context of greenwashing, if you said, I swam on, I swam 15 kilometers and I had lunch with the prime minister or another bullshit, I, I climbed Mount Everest, that would be like greenwashing because that is exaggerating or fabricating environmental credentials. But you didn't do that. Your swim and lunch with sister actually happened. They were true, but yet they were not true reflection of your weekend. Now, let's bring this into the context of corporate environmental sustainability. Hi, I am Jan from sustainablebutterflies.com.au and on the screen you see my five pillars of sustainability. Imagine that you are a CEO of Nestle, everyone knows KitKat, right? And you are introducing a new sustainable KitKat packaging. So from single-use plastic, you're moving to recyclable paper KitKat packaging, right? And you've done your numbers and the calculations show that by doing that, you will avoid 10,000 tons of single-use plastics from all over the world where KitKat is sold. And you run a, an international campaign showing smiling children eating KitKat, right? And uh, sea turtles swimming in crystal clear turquoise water free of plastic pollution. But also from January 1st, all Nestle employee flights will be carbon offset under a certified carbon offsetting scheme right? And your numbers, your uh, calculations show that 8,000 trees will, will be planted because 8,000 trees are needed to absorb the greenhouse gas emissions that are released by uh, each year by your employees flying all over the world, right? So to make up for it, that's the whole net zero carbon offsetting principle. So that's another initiative that you're announcing as a CEO of Nestle. One more example. Now you are a senior executive at Volkswagen, you know the car company, and you announced that by 2035 your entire fleet from passenger cars through SUVs all the way to trucks will be electrical. And as a result of that, 100 million tons of greenhouse gases, CO2, will be avoided, right? Because 100 million tons will not be released by petroleum cars anymore 
because all the cars will be now electrical, right? And you announce it as a new direction for the entire company. Well, what has just happened, right? Uh, the CEOs, they shared true things. They didn't make anything up. They didn't lie. They didn't greenwash. The, the packaging, uh, recycled packaging is legit. The trees will be actually planted. You engaged a professional uh, carbon offsetting certifier such as Greenfleet. And the electrical vehicles, you can compare easily and calculate the greenhouse, tons of greenhouse gas emissions avoided. So all of that is true and legit. This is not greenwash. But is it a true reflection of your environmental footprint? If you are the Nestle guy, are you going to talk about deforestation in Ivory Coast, which is the largest producer of cocoa beans that you use for your KitKat, right? Where they burn the forest and also poison it with glyphosate, right? Or are you going to talk about child slave labor children being trafficked from neighboring Burkina Faso into uh, Ivory Coast to work on these plantations. Well, you're probably not going to talk about that, are you? Now, if you are the Volks guy, are you going to say that to get nickel, which is necessary for car batteries, you have to clear more than 550,000 hectares of primary rainforest in Sulawesi in central Indonesia, which is a biodiverse rich hotspot? Or are you going to say that the copper that's necessary also for the batteries, you mining it from the mine in northern Chile, one of the driest regions in the world, and that mine is powered by coal power and it's using 2000 liters of water per second in this dry region, taking it away from local people and local villages. And by the way, an average electrical car uses four times more copper than average petroleum car. Now, both CEOs, what they did, talking about packaging and carbon offsets and uh, EV cars, electric vehicles, they didn't greenwash. They said something that is actually true. Like when you said that you went for a swim on Saturday and had lunch with sister on Sunday, you didn't lie. It was true. But what do you, what, is that a true reflection of your weekend? And is that a true reflection of the environmental footprint? Well, I, I believe that it is not true, right? Greenwash, in my opinion, is in 2023 not a big deal. Yes, if you are a coal mining company and you claim that your coal is clean, that's clearly greenwash, but that's not really sophisticated. Anyone can pick it like that in no time, right? So that's why I think it's not very big deal and it's not, not dangerous even, right? Uh, however, what is dangerous is this particularization. Because today in 2023, most companies already have their ESG reporting, sustainability strategy, their climate adaptation plan. If they don't have it, they're writing it, right? And what that means is that they breaking their company down into small detailed particulars, right? Very trackable, quantifiable, <clears throat> very detailed and very explicit. And when they do that, they will then be able to pick one or two things that are true and legitimate, right? So it's not greenwashing, such as, you know, a recyclable packaging of KitKat. It actually is true. It's not greenwash. And they can choose one or two or three of these things and then serve them to the public, whether it's shareholders or whether it's customers, over and over, one or two or three of these things, over and over. And because people have limited bandwidth, I'm not any different, right? We have limited bandwidth. We're not going to ask questions, right? We're going to hear two or three things, recyclable packaging and planting trees, carbon offsetting and uh, EV vehicles reducing planet warming emissions, which is all true, right? And we will believe that this is actually stuff that matters. So we can keep buying more KitKats, more cars, right? Uh, flying more because the, if it's offset, it's fine, right? That kind of thing. And that's why I think this is way more dangerous than greenwash, this particularization. Think of it like this, and this is Henri Bergson's idea. Imagine your favorite big painting on a wall or in a gallery somewhere, 
two square meters. Uh, it could be an Aboriginal or Art or Da Vinci or Picasso or Matisse. Doesn't really matter. Your favorite painting. Now, what is the process, do you think, of creating that art, drawing it, painting it, imagine the painter really, or if you are an artist, you can visualize it, right? What is that like in comparison to having the, a copy of that same painting uh, as a box of thousand puzzle pieces and then putting them together one by one, right? And then disassembling and then reassembling that picture. Because uh, on the face of it, they all both look the same, right? But they, they obviously not the same. Another way of looking at this, and this is from Ian McGilchrist, British neuroscientist, he argues that our, as we technologically advance, our society advances, we are better at uh, you know, having better algorithms, having better tracking systems, and being able to categorize, sort, tabulate, quantify, and compare, but that this ability is the left brain hemisphere ability, which can do these things and can, I, can actually take things out of context because it can only see the little part, a little like one tree, but not the forest, right? Ian McGilchrist believes that it's very, it's quite dangerous because it tricks us into believing that ability to categorize, tabulate, sort, chop things down into little particles, it tricks us into believing that it's, it's the path towards values, meaning, and truth. But he says that it actually does the opposite that it moves us away from the bigger picture perspective of the right hemisphere, seeing the forest, not the tree, the gestalten perspective, because the left hemisphere can take things out of the context, but not the right hemisphere can't do it, right? Like an example of this, this, you know, shoving this down people's throat as though this is meaningful, that is the example of what I mean by this particularization. It's taking things out of the context. Now, another way of thinking about this is actually coming from Heidegger, a German philosopher. Um, and uh, there is a quote from his Being and Time, page 77, that you see on the screen, maybe if you want to pause it and read it. At bottom, this plethora of information can seduce us into failing to recognize the real problem. We shall not get a genuine knowledge of essences simply by syncretistic, that means comparing, activity of universal comparison and classification. Subjecting the manifold to tabulation doesn't ensure any actual understanding of what lies there before us as thus set in order. If an ordering principle is genuine, it has its own content as a thing, which is never to be found by means of such ordering, but is already presupposed in it. Okay, so in this video I wanted to share with you uh, my thinking on this trend of particularization. I believe that there are benefits to being able to analyze and sort, but it is not the solution, it is rather just a tool, like you have many tools in a toolbox, sometimes you bring, you take hammer and use hammer to hit nails, but only when you need to hit nails, right? You, you, otherwise you leave hammer in, in the toolbox, right? And I think that this is quite a big deal today in today's world in terms of corporate sustainability and uh, especially as we move towards this net zero by 2050 and carbon neutral and all of that race. It is very easy to be seduced by this race to chase some kind of goal and I think it's much more important. Greenwash is, that's kind of I think moving away. It's much more important to be able to actually to, to see the truth, the stuff that actually matters, you know, because we will be we will be served more and more so-called relevant or green or sustainable messages from the governments of our companies. And we need to be able to discern and to determine what is the stuff that actually matters. That I think it's a key thing moving forward in the roaring 20s of decarbonization. Thank you very much for watching and you have a great day. Bye.